Okay, Aloha class. Wanted to help you out with understanding the GitHub R integration for helping you with your workflow, especially for your homework. So here's the landscape. We have our uh, repositories in the cloud on the GitHub server. Repositories are just collections of files together. You can think of it as a giant folder in the cloud that you want on your computer. Here's our friendly little computer, and it has both active memory, the RAM, and the hard drive where we store all of our files. Now remember, um, I asked you folks to make an R class folder in your user directory, some part of the hard drive where you can store your individual work files, your work files. Um, not in the system folder, okay? That's where you store your software, like your Git software, your R software, all the program software. You definitely don't want to have your work there where you're going to be reading and writing, reading and writing, and, you know, you could potentially corrupt your system's files, which is not good. So not a good practice. Okay? So anyway, we want to get the... Um, let's say I post some code in the repo and you want it to show up in your hard drive. What do you do? Well, you fire up your command, um, your, your terminal or your command app on a PC. So terminal on a Mac or command um, console on a PC. You're going to change directory into this folder. So change directory, uh, and I have it in documents slash R class slash homework. Okay, so this is R class, and inside of there, I have this folder called homework. Then we're going to fire up git, okay? And then we're going to issue this command, git clone, and then the URL for the repo. And what that's going to do is shazam. It's going to actually grab that repo and pull it down to your computer making an exact synchronized duplicate of all the files that are in the repo on your own computer. So this is really fantastic, especially when you need to keep a collection of files synchronized. Okay, then you're going to fire up your R and code, 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 making a beautiful script that is going to produce the analysis that you want that's debugged and that produces output and everything that you want it to do. It's you're going to be saving it onto your hard drive. Okay. And then when you get it into a shape that you like, so now you have made changes to your repo. What you do is now you can get push and get will take every little thing that's changed and push it up to the server. Okay, so you can either submit your homework or just share files with other people that you want to share, work together with or collaborate with. Okay, so to do that, from go back to your console, your terminal or your command app and issue these three little git commands. git add minus a will check for anything that's changed git commit minus m for the message, and you're going to add a commit message. So usually you add some sort of message that is useful to you. That's all it's for, is to track what you're doing. Now remember, GitHub um, or the whole Git system, ecosystem, basically tracks all the versions of all of your work and keeps a history. So you can search through the history by searching through these comments. So it's worthwhile to add a few words of what the important changes are so that in case you ever need to go back and look, you can find the version that you're looking for and actually revert back to that. It's really cool. Then you're gonna get push origin main. Okay, so push pushes it up. And then it's always origin main. So origin is the remote, um, the remote repository, and main is the local repository. 
then you have everything synchronized. Isn't that awesome? You can do the converse, like if somebody else changes some files here that you want to pull down, you can git pull. Okay, so uh, and then that's just git pull origin main, and it'll do the same thing and pull it down from the server onto your computer. There's also other repos that you might want to get. So you just clone them too. Just make sure that you get the proper URL for the repository that you want to clone. But then it's really easy to pick up future homework assignments because I'll be making a repo for each homework. And you don't have to worry about copying down individual files. It'll just grab all of them. And then our shared code repository is class code data. And that's where I'm going to have all of the examples. And um, I should probably actually post all the histories from class activities there too. OK, then, um, yeah, so every time you're going to like edit your R and fire it up and perfect your homework scripts, then you just push it up. And it's as easy as that. So it's worthwhile to try to get this to work because it's really simple to just rerun these three lines of code, you know, code in R, 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 code, 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 and then just add, commit, push, and off it goes. So here's your workflow. Okay, so you just have to clone it once. And then um, once it's cloned, then you go into that directory that you just cloned. So you have to do, you do have to change directories here um, or, you know, open up your term, uh, your point and click and start up your R. Then just work on your scripts and work on your R and your output and everything. Then code push, okay? Code push. You so, sort of see a repeating pattern here, right? So this is a wash, rinse, repeat cycle. And you're going to want to uh, change and commit frequently, OK? Because this is just another way of making saving versions periodically, which is very, very helpful. And if you accidentally do something weird, you can always go back to an earlier version. So push early and push often. Um, that way, too, you can avoid making homework one A homework one, B, homework one, C. You don't have to do any of that, okay? You just keep um, pushing and committing. Commit, push, commit, push, okay? Uh, and then for the first assignment, I have decided that given the pandemic and everything and all the stress, and let's, let, why not, let's, let's just relieve some of the stress. So I'm gonna give you three chances to submit your homework uh, before the due date. Okay, so start maybe start early and send me something to comment on. You're going to push it up. Okay, and when you want me to take a look at it, you're going to go on to the web, um, the GitHub website where your repo is and request a comment. So you're going to generate an issue request on your repo, and then you're going to tag me mbutler808 so that I can get a notification to go and check your code. Now, don't wait to the last minute, because then I won't have time if everyone is, you know, waiting to the last minute. Try to, maybe, maybe you'll be done with it early, right? Who knows? Miracles happen, right? Okay, so he, just to recap, here are, we have some different file locations, your hard drive and the cloud, right, where GitHub is located. And then we have a couple of uh, several different softwares. So R is our main squeeze, so to speak. And we use R to create analyses, do creative work with data, graphics, and just manipulate data and get everything into the shape that we want. We may use a text editor. So for those with Macs, we're really lucky because R has a really great script editor that's built in. But for PC, it's not as fully functional. So I recommended that you try Notepad++, but there's also other text editors. These are all just text editors. 
so that you can more easily work on your script. Um, it's not really necessary because there is actually a text editor that comes built in with R. It's just a little bit more friendly. And then there's Git, right, which is really helpful for synchronizing all of these great works to the cloud server. So we can use it to distribute, synchronize, and actually do version control and um, allow us to document. And um, that, that's another really important feature of this system. It's, it's worthwhile learning, not just because it's convenient for class, but actually all the big software projects now are done on GitHub, or many of them are. And they can uh, support huge collaborations with many different people working on, like possibly hundreds of people working on a set of code. And they all can work simultaneously on it and manage all the information back and forth because they have this really great system of synchronization, documentation, and version control. Okay. Uh, so for class, we have a few different sources of information and people were getting a little bit confused. So just let's just run down quickly. Uh, the main course website is rbootcampbutler.butlerlab.org. And that's the primary location for course material. I like to use my own website for that, sorry. Um, there's Lao Lima, which is our course management system at UH. And we're gonna use it to check grades. And then also for reading assignments via perusal, which is a nice way to collaboratively read reading assignments together. And um, when I get them together, I'm gonna post quizzes there and send you a notification. So for most of our back and forth communication, I would prefer that you use Slack. And uh, it's just useful. It's sort of like, um, you know, turbocharged texting, group texting <laughs> in a sense. But uh, everyone can basically, you know, feed off of other people's ideas and share insights and help each other answer questions also benefit from maybe some answers that I give because people do tend to have the same questions and it just makes life a lot easier for everyone if we share information. You can also make office hour requests. And so if other people are available at the same time, they can jump on. And, but if you get stuck, uh, don't just like stress out, just email me, okay? When, when all else fails, you can always email. And then GitHub, the R Bootcamp GitHub site is, is the repository for all of our class repositories, information I'm gonna share with you, uh, especially code and data. And then also the homework, the coding homework will be posted there and handled through GitHub. So I hope that clarifies that. And I'm gonna end by going through an example of using the GitHub to synchronize. Okay, so let's say that you're ready to do your homework. So you're going to go and check the Slack to find the homework link for the repo, or uh, you, you can check your email. I'll have sent it to you by email as well. I've already actually accepted this assignment, so you might have to accept it first, but eventually you'll get to this page where you'll see that there's a repo for homework one, but it's also just for me. It's a special repo set up just for myself, my own username. And if you click on it, you'll get directly sent to that repo. So there's a web page for it. Here's the files that are included and the instructions. So including like what I'm looking for, what you're going to submit, the idea, the concept, what the tasks that you have to accomplish. Um, you're going to modify a script, et cetera. And, uh, and then finally, how to commit and push your changes back to the repo. Um, <laughs> I apologize for the errors that I had earlier in class. There used to be a different convention in the naming system, but apparently master is not such a good thing to use these days. Um, Huh. <laughs> uh, now they've changed master to main, and that was the source of the error. So it's just a simple, all I had to do is switch out the words and everything worked beautifully. 
Okay. And because this is the first homework and we're in the middle of a pandemic and everyone's stressed out, I'm going to allow you three tries. So you can have three chances to submit your homework and get comments on it before the due date. Okay. So make sure that you start early. Um, so uh, you're going to co uh, add, commit, and push and then um, generate an issue request so that I can uh, go in and check your homework. And be sure to tag me so that I'll get a notification. All right, so when you're ready to clone your repo, you find this green button, this code button, and click on it. And here is the URL for that repo. You can just copy the clipboard, and it will copy the link to your clipboard. Then you're going to open um, your console. So on a Mac, it's the terminal. And on a PC, it'll be the command console. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger Oops, so that everyone can see back home. OK, and I am going to start off. When I start it up, it's in my home directory, my home user directory. And I have put my RCOS folder inside of my documents folder. So I'm going to first change directory CD to documents and then slash R class. And I'm going to check the list of the directories here. So LS. And those are all the files and folders in this directory. On a PC, it would be um, DIR. Uh, that would list the directory. Okay, and the, the folder I'm after is this one, Homeworks. If I didn't have this folder here already, I could create it just by using the make dir command. And that's common between both Unix and PC systems. But I would just do make dir and then the name Homework. But I'm not going to do it because I already have a folder. So now I'm going to change directory into the Homework folder. Um, oh, okay. Oops. I'm going to, I forgot to remove this. I'm going to remove homework one because uh, I was practicing earlier. Uh, okay, wait. So, um, rm, rm minus rf h1, homework one, cars. So now when I list, it's gone, <laughs> OK? Um, but anyway, OK, so here I am where I want my repository to go. This is where I would issue the git clone command. And I paste in the URL. So git clone and the link to the repo. Hit return. And voila, it's done. OK, so check again. Let's list. And there it is. So if I can um, list the contents by giving it the, I can list the contents by giving it the, um, the using the ls command with the name of the directory. And it will tell me what's inside. Okay, but now let's go inside. So we're gonna change directory again. And on a, uh, OK, so CD and then homework one, cars, et cetera. OK, so here's the, here's the, OK, so I can actually, now what I normally do is I go to my finder at this point and navigate to the folder. And let's say I want to check out cars script.r. So I double click here, and it will fire up my R. Here's the console, and here's the script. And as I showed you in class, I can execute lines of code by pressing the command um, and the return. So I highlight the code I want to execute, and then I do command return. And there's speed. And if I want to know the value of speed, I only highlight speed, command return. And there's the values of speed. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so I could change this a little bit. Like I can add a comment here. So distance. 
and I can execute this and just check. And there it is. So let's say that I made a bunch of changes that I wanted to save. Um, okay, so actually the, so I'll save this and um, actually this is the stub. So the stub is what you're gonna be modifying for your homework. And um, let's say you wanted to delete these, which is fine because they're just commented out anyway. If you don't need them, you can feel free to delete them. But let's say you um, did some other things that you wanted to save. Or, okay, let's just save this because I changed it. So uh, we, I would do save as and just change the file name. Let's just use this as a test. So I'm going to save it as test.r. Hit save. And then now when I um, look at the finder, I have this test.r file here. The same thing will be in the terminal. So if I do ls here, now I have test.r. Okay, so it's been created here. So let's say we wanted to push this up to the repo. How do we do that? Well, we just use the at the command line git and then add minus a. And that stages the files that I want committed. Then git commit minus M added, let's say added test. Okay, that's fine. You can, the message can be anything. This is a message to yourself so that you know what the change was related to. And then git push origin master. Oh, shoot, there it is again. Okay, not master, git push origin main. Okay, let's do that again. Git push origin main. And there it is. All right. So it changed two objects, which is right because I changed two files. Um, so I can do git status. And it says my branch is up to date. Yay! Okay. So let's go and. Um, Check, check again on our web browser and let's refresh. And here you can see that there were two, one minute ago, there were a couple of changes and you can actually click on the commit message. And what you'll see here is everything that was changed in that particular commit. And you can see it will actually highlight exactly where the changes occurred, which lines and even what part of the line. Isn't that amazing? So not only does it track the history of everything you're doing, but it will has this useful tool to highlight the difference between the previous and the new version. So this is how you can actually scroll back through your history to find uh, where things changed in case you ever need to go back and rewrite history, so to speak. <laughs> All right, so I said that I would check your homework for you if you want. So to do that, what you're gonna do is, let's say this is my uh, submission script. And I'd like to, for so you can actually comment anywhere in here, but you're, what you're gonna do is generate an issue so let's say I was really unsure about line 10. I would highlight that line and click on the little three dots and choose reference in new issue. So here I would type, please check my homework and then submission number one. And I asked you to tag me. So how you do that is you go into this um, message box and type at mbutler808. And that should send me a message asking, some, asking me to check the homework and then submit. And that's it. Okay, and when, when you're all done, you're gonna submit your homework. But you, you can have until the due date to ask me to check it in whatever you want. And uh, you can have up to three tries. Okay, so hopefully that will help you and take some of the stress off. 
uh, when you actually have time to look at it, you'll see that it's not that bad. <laughs> it's really not that bad. I tried to go easy on you. Um, but just try to, you know, figure out what it is you're trying to do. It's always a, a good idea to have some idea of what you're trying to accomplish, and then you'll be able to code it. So try to imagine what the what it is you want, and then the coding will come so much more easily. And um, as always, you can feel free to ask questions on the Slack. Be sure to post in general, not don't DM me for every little message because that's just the same thing as emailing me, okay? Uh, post to general so that we can all see and help each other and learn from each other's questions. All right, so have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Take care.